Uh, very well, Dr. Kranzler. Ich biete als Beweismittel Dönitz 100 an, die eidesstattliche Erklärung des amerikanischen Flottenchefs Admiral Nimitz über den amerikanischen U-Boot-Krieg gegen Japan. Im Tribunal ist bereits bekannt, was ich damit beweisen will. Ich brauche jetzt nichts vorzulesen, weil ich in meinem Plädoyer darauf zurückkommen muss. The, the tribunal would like to have the document read, uh, Dr. Krenzbüller. Möchtest du vorgelesen haben? Jawohl. Ich habe hier den Originaltext auf Englisch, Herr Präsident. Ich muss also auf Englisch lesen. At the request of the International Military Tribunal, the following, following interrogatories were on this date, 11 May 1940, put to Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, United uh, you States... You must have given the date wrong, I think. 1946, isn't it? The 11 May 1946. Yeah. Go on. Put to Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, United States Navy, by Lieutenant Commander Joseph L. Broderick, United States Naval Reserve of the International Law Section, Office of the Judge Advocate General, Navy Department, Washington, D.C who recorded verbatim the testimony on the witness, of the, of the witness. Admiral Nimitz was duly sworn by Lieutenant Commander Broderick and interrogated as follows. Question. What's your name, rank, and present station? Answer. Chester W. Nimitz, Fleet Admiral, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations of the United States Navy. Question. What positions in the United States Navy did you hold from December 1941 until May 1945? Answer. Commander-in-Chief, United States Pacific Fleet. Question. Did the United States of America, in her sea warfare against Japan, announce certain waters to be areas of operation, blockade, danger, restriction, warning, or the like? Answer? Yes. For the purpose of command of operations against Japan, the Pacific Ocean areas were declared a theater of operations. <coughs> Question. If yes, was it customary in such areas for submarines to attack merchantmen without warning, with the except, exception of her own and those of her allies. Answer? Yes. With the exception of hospital ships and other vessels under safe conduct, voyages for humanitarian purposes. Question. Were you under orders to do so? Answer. The Chief of Naval Operations on 7 December 1941 ordered unrestricted submarine warfare against Japan. Question. Was it customary for submarines to attack Japanese merchantmen without warning? 
outside of announced operation or similar areas since the outbreak of the war? Answer. The reply to this interrogatory involves matters outside the limits of my command during the war. Therefore, I make no reply thereto. Question. Were you under orders to do so? Answer. The reply to this interrogatory involves matters outside the limits of my command during the war. Therefore, I make no reply thereto. Question. If the practice of attacking without warning did not exist since the outbreak of the war, did it exist from a later date on? From what date on? Answer. The practice existed from 7 December 1941 in the declared zone of operations. Question. Did this practice correspond to issued orders? Answer. Yes. Question. Did it become known to the United States naval authorities? that Japanese merchantmen were under orders to report any sighted United States submarine to the Japanese armed forces by radio. If yes, when did it, beca did it become known? Answer. During the course of the war, it became known to the United States naval authorities that Japanese merchantmen, in fact reported by radio to Japanese armed forces, any information regarding sighting of United States submarines. Question. Did the United States submarines thereupon received the order to attack without warning Japanese merchantmen. If this order did not exist already before, if yes, when? Answer, the order existed from 7 December 1941. Question. Did it become known to the United States Naval Authorities that the Japanese merchantmen were under orders to attack any United States submarine in any way suitable according to the situation? For instance, by ramming gunfire, or by depth charge? If yes, when did it become known? Answer. Japanese merchantmen were usually armed and always attacked by any available means when feasible. Question. Did the United States submarines thereupon receive the order of attacking without warning Japanese merchantmen if this order did not already exist before? If yes, when? Answer. The order existed from 7 December 1941. Question. Were, by order or on general principles, the United States submarines prohibited from
from carrying out rescue measures <coughs> toward passengers and crews of ships sunk without warning. In those cases, where by doing so, the safety of the own boat was endangered. <coughs> Answer. On general principles, the United States submarines did not rescue enemy survivors if undue additional hazard to the submarine resulted or the submarine would thereby be prevented from accomplishing its further mission. United States submarines were limited in rescue measures by small passenger carrying facilities combined with the known desperate and suicide suicidal character of the enemy. Therefore, it was unsafe to pick up many survivors. Frequently, survivors were given rubber boats and or provisions. Almost invariably, survivors did not come aboard the submarine voluntarily, and it was necessary to take them prisoner by force. Question. If such an order or principle did not exist, Did the United States submarines actually carry out rescue measures in the above mentioned cases? Answer. In numerous cases, enemy survivors were rescued by United States submarines. Question. In answering the above question, does the expression merchantman mean any other kind of ships than those which were not warships? Answer, no. By merchantmen, I mean all types of ships which were not combatant ships. Used in this sense, it includes fishing boats, etc. Question. If yes, what kind of ships? Answer. The last answer covers this question. Question. Has any order of the United States Naval Authorities mentioned in the above questionnaire concerning the tactics of the United States submarines our Japanese merchantmen being based on the grounds of reprisal? If yes, what orders? Answer. The unrestricted submarine and air warfare ordered on 7 December 1941 resulted from the recognition of Japanese tactics revealed on that date. No further orders to United States submarines concerning tactics toward Japanese merchantmen throughout the war were based on reprisal Also, specific instant, uh, instances of Japanese submarines committing atrocities toward United States merchant marine survivors 
became known and would have justified such a cause. Question. Has this aura or have these auras of the Japanese government been announced as reprisals? Answer, this question is not clear. Therefore, I make no reply thereto. Question. On the basis of what Japanese tactics was the reprisal considered justified? Answer. The unrestricted submarine and air warfare ordered by the Chief of Naval Operations on 7 December 1941 was justified by the Japanese attacks on that date on United States bases and on both armed and unarmed ships and nationals without warning or declaration of war. The above record of testimony has been examined by me on this date and is in all respects accurate and true. Signed, Chester W. Nimitz, Fleet Admiral, United States Navy. Dokument hat die Nummer 200.